Good afternoon, good day, good evening. I'm James Myers and welcome to Contingency Now's YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about business insurance vis-a-vis -vis contingency planning. Why you need them both, okay? Now, to begin with, everybody in business should have insurance. Should. It's not a requirement unless you're dealing with um, uh, government entities and so forth. There's requirements in that. But for the most part, Business insurance is not a requirement, but you should have it. Contingency planning, a good, strong contingency plan, which encapsulates business continuity and disaster recovery both, should be part of your business operations and, and short and long-term uh, business um, operations as well. It's not a requirement, but you should have it. Therefore, you should have them both. Case in point, here's my insurance. I have business insurance. Contingency now does my business. And it's a great policy it's through State Farm. It's the traditional business insurance, you know, million dollar liability and all that stuff. And I also have a contingency plan, a long term and short term business continuity plan for all those action items and metrics and issues and, and, and things I need to get done that my insurance policy doesn't cover. Okay? So, what do insurance uh, in general, what do insur business insurance policies, I'm talking about businesses here, insurance policies cover? They cover your Lost profits, the cost of your lost profits, um, cost of your operational expenses, okay, and help you make payroll short term. Doesn't go in perpetuity, doesn't go on forever. So keep that in mind. Also, keep in mind that insurance companies are just like everybody else that they're in business. They're in it to make a profit. They're in it to make money just like you and just like me. So what does that tell you? That tells you as a business owner and with respect to insurance policies that the very last thing they want to do is what? Pay out claims. The first thing you want to do is receive payments from customers just like me. So they receive payments in, a lot of payments, you know, billions or millions, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of payments, in hopes that your business will not file a claim whether it's through um, you know, some form of a small incident or a disastrous event. So the difference between the money coming in to insurance programs and the money going out is how they make their profits. So insurance, if you, if you, look, inside, if you look inside your policy, you read it line by line, and it's, it's, not, it's not a lot of fun to do, but I've done it a couple of times here, you will notice that there's a lot of fine print. There's a lot of small print with respect to declarations and what can be what, what can be claimed and what can be not be claimed and how you do it and what are the restrictions and, and there's a reason for that because they don't want to give out claims. They want it to, they're in it to make money just like you and I. Okay? So what I've done is I put together a small chart and it's, it's, it's on here in the video of what insurance does not cover. And this is not all inclusive. There's more to it than this. There's probably another one third line items. But for, for, for the most part for today, for you and I, Here's a good high-level list. Now, within this list, think of it this way. This is what insurance does not cover, but this is what a good business continuity and disaster recovery plan will cover. So let me just read them off to you very quickly here, and you can follow through on the, um, on the, on the video as well. Okay? So think of it this way. This is what insurance does not cover, but a good continuity program will cover. And you need them both. You need a good balance and a good mix of them both to really mitigate your um, uh, risks, identify those vulnerabilities, and effectively put your money into a good risk management program. Because insurance and contingency planning are both in the same ballpark. It's called risk management. So here's the list. Loss of customer goodwill. Loss of market share. Negative publicity slash per perception of your business. Reduced cash flow control, hence you're forking out a lot of money trying to stay in business, cost and increased customer churn. And we all know it takes at least three times as much money to bring back an old customer than it is to acquire a new one. Missed business opportunities, gone. Value of lost data between data backups. Decrease in investor opportunities, okay? And then loss of information needed to make strategic and operational decisions. Cost of winning back lost customers, plus the churn. Corporate 
and or personal legal liability costs. That's a real gotcha. You can have lawsuits filed not only you against you as an individual as a corporate officer, but against your company as well. Loss of vital and critical paper and or electronic records. Where are they? How are we going to get them? So on and so forth. Loss of employees and their knowledge. Employees aren't going to stick around forever in a day. They've got bills to pay too. And they'll jump ship and find themselves another job. While your systems are down and you're still trying to recover. There's another little chart I made up with respect to what, what's covered and what's not covered. What contingency plan supports and what insurance doesn't. Okay, So keep in mind, you want to have a good balance with your, across your risk management uh, program within your business. Okay, Regardless of the size of business. You have five employees, you've got 5,000. It's the same, same rules of thumb. So I just threw this together real quick just a few minutes ago because I kind of had a brain, brain thought there. So here's your insurance payments, right? Like I said, here's your, here's your check, you know, like I did. Here's your insurance payments on the, on the very short end. Here's time and money in the middle. This is your downtime. And remember, as this gets spread out this way, this way, or this way, it gets wider, costs you more money. And where's the money come from? Cash, cash on hand. Okay, and this is your recovery, what I call business recovery right here. So this is getting back to quasi, at least the best you can, normal operating mode. What happens is this. Here's the problem with which most business owners don't realize. There is a huge amount of added expense and costs involved in getting your business up and running again due to an incident or a disastrous event, whether inside your business or against it. Okay, And right here, that's where that, all that money and time is spent. And the longer you're down and the more money you spend here, it depletes your cash on hand. And what happens is, by the time you even get 50% into getting your business up and running again, you ran out of cash. Hence, you go into a bankruptcy mode. So you can actually still go into bankruptcy mode, even with an insurance policy. Okay? And that's kind of what this shows. So, to put it brief... As a business entity, if you have a, if, assuming you have business insurance, and you don't have a contingency plan, or a, a well-executable contingency plan, you're really wasting your time and money, because business insurance will not save your business. It will not. It will provide you good tactical upfront monies for you to spend, to where you can hopefully get your business up and running again. Now. It's where you spend your money, how you spend your money, how effectively and efficiently you spend that money is where contingency planning comes into play. Because remember, you want to reduce that amount of downtime. And if, you, if you've got that all ironed out up front and you know what you're doing and know where you're going, you know how you're going to get there with your expenditures when you're down through a good contingency plan, you've shortened that downtime and hence decreased the opportunity of all those what I call non-valuable risks, okay? The money you spend that you didn't expect to spend. Goodbye cash flow. So insurance without a plan is equal to, without a contingency plan, excuse me, is pretty much equal to a waste of time and money. However, if let's say you have a good contingency plan in place, but you don't have business insurance, guess what you've just done to yourself? What we call a uh, creative or critical writing course. So you've pretty much sat yourself down or your employees down or a contractor down and you wrote up this nice great big document uh, that covers all your business operations for contingency plan but you don't have any insurance to back it or to support it. So basically it's a, hmm, it's a good writing program I just put together, you know? And you don't want that either. You want to have both. You want to have your insurance in hand that covers those short-term costs and expenses, but you also want to have that business contingency plan in place to help you figure out and to know where to spend that money that insurance that insurance is paying out to you. And don't ever forget, insurance companies are in to make a profit. And you, as a business owner, want to work in tandem and hand in hand with your insurance provider. Help them help you. That's how I look at it. Put your contingency plan together, present that to them in paper, in writing, send it to them, you know, send it to your insurance advisor. Say, so here, look what we've done in our business. And guess what? You might even get a discount. Because 
you're helping insurance companies. You're helping the whole aspect of risk management by identifying the fact that you can, as a business entity in operations, get up and running as soon as you possibly can versus like being down for three, four, five, six months and going bankrupt down the road. Insurance, insurance companies don't want to pay that out. They don't want that happening to you. They want to keep you as a valid customer, good, you know, valid customer. And, and we, contingents now, want to see you stay in business as well. So think about it that way. It's a good balance that goes hand in hand. Contingency planning and insurance. You should have both. That's all we have for now. Next week, we're going to talk about, i got a list over here, so excuse me, I'll take a look at it. Um, next week, we're going to talk about the morality and the ethical aspects of contingency planning for your business. There is a morality and ethical aspect to this whole component of business continuity, disaster recovery, there's security in there, you know, all that. And we're going to talk about that. That's coming up next. So I want to thank you for joining us today about talking about contingency planning and insurance. I hope you enjoy the show. And with that, good day. Bye.